blaster dirt here, and oh, I'm gonna turn off my fan because that's probably loud. There we go. Let's drop that noise floor a little bit. Perfect. Yeah, it is swelteringly hot in my office here, hence why I've been keeping my camera off, as you probably don't want to see me just sitting around here with my tits out. Um, but anywho, let's get to back to another update on the procedural mesh, mesh product project um, demo, whatever this is ending up to be, because I've just fallen down this rabbit hole and can't seem to get out. So you'll see I now have a grid for kind of reference. I've got an outline to show me what I'd be selecting, and I've got materials on the box now. So you've already seen manipulation by face, but look, I've got it working a little bit nice for manipulation. It's still not like 100% where I want it yet, but that works. You have also seen grabbing at a corner, okay? What is new is two functional things and one pretty major huge under the hood thing. Um, so I can now select different tools. You'll see pop up there. I only have grab and translate implemented right now. We can now grab the box and move it around. Let's place it right there. Oh, not quite centered. So we're just gonna whoop, move it in there. Okay. And if I go back to translate mode, so I can grab a face, I can grab a vertice, but I can now grab an edge as well. Look at that. How sexy is that? Hey, hey. And all of these functions, if I right click, will undo. Look at that. Well, not undo, but um, cancel the current modification okay so and all that is taken care of by this um, that is actually a little bit of a lie because you can see I've got a butt ton of macros open that are all in here which are applied throughout and a few collapse graphs so I get things like that in there um, but one of the big changes so the big under the hood change which is fargan awesome if I don't say so myself, well, if I do say so myself, because I'm saying it, um, is that this is no longer on the block. So the old one was on the block here. And you can see there's all my prototype mess. And that was all on the block. The current block I have out on the world is this. And all it's doing is building a procedural mesh block from a list. But the idea is, so if I come here and I am going to make a new actor and we're going to call this quick proof any mesh. Okay. And on event graph on begin play I do a let's see cube, I think there's like a procedural mesh cube full mesh um, calculate tangents, no ooh, I didn't know it would create triangles now, but let's see, there was a generate box mesh, there we go so I want this to be, uh, let's do 200, uh, 100 by 100 by 100. We are going to add a procedural mesh component. And we are going to create a section. So this is just with Unreal Engine's built-in stuff. Nothing funny on this actor. All this is doing is building a simple box of a procedural mesh. 
And if I drop that off into the world, just over here somewhere. And we're going to do like 200 forward, 300 up. Just so it's not center center where the other one is. If we play, hey look, I've got a new mesh. It highlights, but then it applies things to the corners. And I can do all my modifications to any procedural mesh. Ooh. Except for it's not liking the face transform for some reason. It's treating it as a grab. Oh, because, um, okay, I'm going to have to fix that. So what's happening on this box is each face is its own individual section. So when I click a face, it's only giving me these four vertices. Whereas this is all one section. Okay. So that will be, um, that'll be easy enough to fix. So I can fix that. But the idea behind that is not only will I be able to modify any generated procedural mesh like that. But if we go grab, I'm just going to see if I don't have an FBX file somewhere. I got to have something. It's probably on that hard drive. Um, oh, that's so ugly. Do I have something else? I really don't want to use that. I guess I have to. So, my only mesh I have as an FBX right now is this really, really ugly, was supposed to be a quick stand-in for a P90 rifle. It's like, it's not, per actually, that's significantly better than I remember it being. Huh. But anywho, so we're going to on our quick test block, quick proof any mesh, we are going to add a, oh, not static mesh simulation. We want a static mesh. We want to set that as my P90 Quick, I think the cube is the body. Yep, cube is the body. Okay, and then we want to um, so we want to take this and then we want to procedural copy procedural mesh from static mesh component and then we want to do that and we want to create collisions. And then we want to destroy the original mesh. So what this is going to leave us is a stead or a procedural mesh copy or duplicate of our P90. Now, if I click on it, ooh, this might take a little while because there's a lot more vertices on this thing. Yeah, it it's froze up good. That that may have been a stupid. So you'll probably want to do this with the less complex meshes. Oh. Okay, I do have some other things. So yeah, we're gonna quickly. <laughs> oh. Nope. Now it now it won't even shut down. I have. Woo. Okay. Yeah. Um. Because this thing has far too many vertices, it was not optimized at all for anything. There we go. Now it's closed. Nope, it's still. Okay, so we're going to, come on. We're going to spam the stop button. <laughs> because uh, we want this to not be... Yeah, my RAM is at like 100% usage right now. That, that's great. Okay, but anywho, let's, uh, 
Yeah, let's let's try. So we'll get rid of those. And yes, I'm gonna force delete my P90, and then we're going to get my tiles from the clone of the game. I can't remember what it was called. Um, but anywho, we are going to take this half block because again these probably have too many actually those probably don't have too many vertices so we're gonna get this square tunnel anyway it's gonna have way less than the other thing so we're gonna choose square tunnel so this here will be generated in just a second so it is now a procedural mesh. And if I click it, look at all those vertex points. And that's right, folks. You could convert any procedural mesh, or sorry, any static mesh into a procedural mesh. Oh, it looks like all of these are different things here. But yeah and then modify it as long as you've set up your mesh correctly beforehand. So, what do you all think of that? And then we're gonna grab it and move that monstrosity over here. <laughs> but yeah, so at this point, it's a little bit complicated to go over a tutorial, so if people ask, I'm going to give like a super dumbed down version of this as a tutorial. Because this has been like four days now, or five days, and like one full, full day to do this. And I don't want to redo all that as a tutorial. I love you guys, but not that much. I'm not deleting anything that I actually need. Nope, good, okay. But yeah, um, doo -doo -doo. yeah, I'm gonna first delete this. But yeah, that's the thing. When it's complete, depending on how it functions and if it's reliable, I may end up putting it to the marketplace. And it would be my first marketplace upload. But that is something that we'll have to wait and see. But anywho. I hope you've enjoyed the update and just seeing what sort of stuff you can do with procedural mesh if you decide to go insane and jump down that rabbit hole for four days. But um, to the rest of you sane people out there, these are things you'll never accomplish. Haha. <laughs> Join us on our level of insanity to build random crap that doesn't go anywhere. And really has no purpose other than being a very, very interesting side project. Um, but yeah, I've learned a ton about procedural mesh from this. So I do think once I'm happy with it, I'm going to do some sort of procedural mesh tutorial. Because it is fun to work with. Um, I don't think in this tool I'm going to implement slicing. Where like you can cut the mesh apart. But the project I'm thinking of that builds on this might have it. So you may see me play with that in the future. Um, I have messed with it in the past, but I just don't... It's not high priority to add in here. I want to finish up the um, scaling and painting tools and get it to play with faces properly without it needing to be a separate section. Yeah. So yeah, we'll see y'all later. Thank you for watching, and ooh, I could easily do that with fine points along the plane. Yeah, I'll do it that way. Anywho, I'm gonna go do that now, <laughs> and we'll see you all later.